Hi guys, today a video on an easier way of playing modes and using the minor topic. Before we start though, please smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, because that really does help keep this channel going. Okay, we will start with the minor topic. So we will take the basic chord of C major 7, and instead of thinking about a scale, we will play the arpeggio of the third chord of C major, which would be E minor. If we played C major 7 in this position, we could use the sixth chord in C major, so we could use the A minor arpeggio. And what we develop within this E minor arpeggio, we can do the same within this A minor arpeggio. Another important point, it's extremely easy to link these arpeggios. E minor. A minor. So basically, with this minor topic, we're building everything from this shape and using different concepts or tools in this shape to create music. Now, the first thing to take into consideration with this E minor arpeggio or this five fret position is the basic pentatonics. So we could have a pentatonic. Here's another. And here's another using the arpeggio of E minor 7. So we join this together. That's another one. And now we go to the last string. Or you could do it this way. So straight away you have some basic pentatonics that you can use. Now the next thing to take into consideration is fourths. So, because of this arpeggio, you have easy access to fourths. So if we just take them E minor 7, or just even E minor, you can start to add fourths. So straight away you've got more harmony there to deal with. So this time we'll take one of the fourths and use a minor chord. And resolve that A minor to C major. This time we will extend it adding this part. So we have So you can see how that works as well. So you have, because of the tunings in fourths, it's just so easy to play because you just bar. It's just very easy to do. And it starts to create that kind of um, fusion quartal sound. And it's just instinctively natural because it's within that E minor arpeggio and that five fret shape, you can't go wrong really. The other thing you have to remember is that you have the cycle of fourths. So B minor, E minor, A minor, D minor. Or it could be B major, E major, A major, D major. Or we could go down semitone here and we got B flat. And now we got E flat. And on it goes. You, so you have this cycle of fourths in there as well. And this gives you lots of um, harmony for chromaticism and moving about. <laughs> We also have target tones or approach notes. So for this simple arpeggio, 
we can add for E and E and a. We could also add some chromatic notes to this as well on the arpeggio. quite instinctive as well to take pentatonics or make pentatonics out of this. We're using string skipping. And you can start to make Lots of interesting ideas from that. Another thing you can do is add some scalic notes with the arpeggio. For instance, something like that, where you've got a bit of scale and a bit of arpeggio. And just join that together as well. The other great thing about this is that you can actually start to use triads as well. So we'll stick with C major 7. But we might think of using Lydian, so we could play the D major arpeggio. Or G major 7. So you have these triad pairs. Right under your fingertips. So this gives you great scope with which to play and develop ideas because you have pentatonics, you have triad pairs, you have the chords, you have the cycle of fourths moving. You got quartal harmonies and fourths, very easy to play because you just need to bar the notes really. And... Okay, so now let's apply this to the modes of C. So if we have Dorian, we could think of using D minor, as in if it was a scale of B flat, you'd have D minor as the third chord of B flat. So, and we can apply all of that stuff we've learnt in E minor, just take it down a fret to D minor. For C Phrygian, we could have C minor or F minor. F minor is useful because it's just a semitone up. Also F minor connects nicely here to back to A flat as an A flat major 7. For Lydian, because we have the F sharp, we could just use the E minor again. For C mixolydian, because we have that B flat, we could just use D minor again. So. so you could just use the D minor again. And again, you could add to fourths and triads and all sorts of things. But it's just the same shape again. For C Aeolian, because it's just really E flat over C, you could, so you could just use the same same thing there, same principles, exactly the same, but it's a G minor arpeggio. So it's an E flat, G minor, third of E flat. Lastly, of course, we have D flat over C for this Locrian. So again, D flat F as an F minor, F minor being the third of D flat. So you've got F minor again. And so you just develop material in that F minor shape again. One last look in this one position we could have for this Dorian, we could just play a simple G minor uh, pentatonic scale. That could be all we need. Something like that. You could also make a simple pentatonic, for instance, so we could have something like that. We just make a simple pentatonic up. Or you could add a few scalic notes in there too.
And the same with D Lydian, you could have the D7 arpeggio. Or started on C, the, the dominant seventh. For C mix a Lydian, we could just use this G minor pentatonic again. Just the same thing again. And if you really want to emphasise it, you could add the A flat and the E flat in there. <laughs> Lastly, for C Locrian, we could just use a pentatonic that's really basic. In conclusion, this is just a few ideas on how to actually do something and make music out of these modes and actually have some sort of route from which to work from, like the minor topic, extremely useful because then you can actually have something, a base from which then to create music, whether it's using pentatonics, melodies, motifs, quartal harmony, cycle of fourths, whatever you want to use because a lot of the harmony is already under your fingertips at the guitar. A lot of it due to the tuning being in fourths, although you've got the thirds here. But um, this is really useful when you're playing the guitar. And that's why a lot of people find the modes difficult um, or improvising difficult, because they're always looking for things on the guitar. Whereas due to the tuning, a lot of it is already there under your fingertips. You don't have to chase after, it's already there. And like I say, with the arpeggios, you can join them up. I mean, they connect extremely easily. So what you play here, you can play here. Otherwise, you end up with all these scales and all these shapes and everything that are all over the place that really are impossible to join up, rhythmically anyway, and make musical phrasing. So once you have something like a bass, like we've been doing in this um, short video, then you have something with which to work with and build up on. And then you can connect this one, like I say, via the arpeggio, to this one, to this one, to this one, just using the arpeggios. Having said all of this, when you make videos, it's extremely difficult to get this simplistic idea of this across. However you present it, it always comes across as slightly inflated and bloated in a video. So although these ideas are quite simple, you have to do it through actually practicing them. But like I always say, if you're in a classroom, it's easy to show somebody and you can physically show them. On a video, you're always sort of shut off from that because you're just on a video. You're alone in a room making a video. You're not actually um, in the presence of other people. Anyway, if this video was of any use to you, then please smash that subscribe button because that really does keep the channel going. Smash the like button because that helps with the algorithm. Click the notification button if you like the video and write a comment if you want. And I'll see you all in the next video. And thank you for watching.